today I am going to try to do a review on the Scout. So the last time I did a review I'd flown it for like an hour and a half so virtually no time on it and I've since revised a lot of my opinions about it and the motor. So right now it's got about 50 hours on it. I forget what I bought it with, maybe 15 something. So I probably only got about 20 something hours on it. Uh, I feel like I got a good feel for it especially in comparison to other motors I've flown so um, I'll give you my thoughts on it and uh, well, yeah we'll go from there. I think that's it. Oh, the weather. Yeah, so the only problem is the weather. Um, winds are like five, gusting to 15. So I, 15's no good, but five would be fine. So we'll go out to the airport and see it's like. And also the wind is blowing out of the wrong direction for that airport, so. But we'll go out, we'll try, try to get high. I'm gonna cut that out. All right, peace. <laughs> So, trying to conserve battery, so I did not film my launch, which is unfortunate because it was pretty good. Yeah, so today's flight, plan is to do the Scout review, Scout the Moster review. Um, hopefully there's battery in this, I should have checked. Oh yeah. Synced up. All right. All right, that should be good. All right, so, review. Also, I am flying a new wing, but I'm gonna save that for another day. I'll go over what I bought. Looks the same, it, I'll just tell you, it's another Hadron. It's just smaller, it's an 18, so. Uh, and yeah, I'll say, only thing I tell you about this wing is it launches a lot faster than my last wing, which is a bummer. Um, but it's good, and the brake lines are a little bit long. Um, okay, so review. I even wrote all this stuff down on a piece of paper that I forgot to bring it. But I have put uh, 20, uh, 20 something hours. I don't remember the hours of the motor when I bought it, but. I think it's around 20, 25 hours on the motor. Um, and when I did the first review, I had flown it for about an hour. However, now that I put some time on it, I want to address a couple things. So I, when I first bought it, I said that uh, the torque was, I don't know what word I used, but I was complaining about the torque. So uh, that. And I even said when I when I mentioned that that it may just be that I went from a top 80 to a, uh, a Moster 185. So I can tell you now that that's what it was. So the torque I was complaining about was the torque that you don't feel with an 80 cc motor. The torque you do feel with a 185 cc motor. So uh, I don't think I had anything else bad to say about it. Um, most of what I said I liked about the motor. I still do. So the harness is comfortable. Um, obviously, it's sexy. Um, but I'll start with the bad stuff. So after 25 hours, what I will say about this motor is that the, not the motor, the frame, the Scout frame is fragile. So that's why um, I'm hesitant to recommend this to beginners. I think that's why a lot of people are hesitant. I don't even think Scout recommended for two beginners for that reason. You guys probably saw my other video. If you didn't, I'll put a link right here. But uh, I did crash it. I came down pretty hard. The video doesn't look like I did, but that was about a five or six foot drop with the motor running full throttle uh, on kind of like almost a backward 30 to 45 degree angle. So all the force went right on the edge of that neural frame and sent the, the uh, cage into the prop. And I broke all my spars and everything. That being said, um, it, it's fixable. So I was able to fix 90% of it. All the spars on this motor have been snapped in half and I repaired them. Uh, at home, I've never done any carbon fiber work. I just did some YouTube research, bought some carbon fiber and repaired it myself. And if I don't point it out, you can't tell. Uh, even when I do point it out, people are usually pretty impressed at how seamless it looks. Now, I did take a lot of time doing it. Um, a lot of people 
you could just throw duct tape on them or, you know, throw some carbon fiber and epoxy on there. Don't sand it or anything, and it'll look fine. But, uh, yeah, uh, if you take your time, you can make it look really good. The cage, I broke three of those. was able to repair two. Probably could repair the third, but haven't. Um, so, yeah, even though it is fragile, you can't fix it. Along with that, it is uh, expensive, right? But I'm hesitant to say a pair of motors, they're all expensive. So if you break anything on a pair of motor, no matter what the, the pair of motor, it's expensive to get fixed. So that's just part of it. That's part of the sport. Um, that is the only bad thing I have to say about this frame or the motor. So the good stuff, uh, like I said, super comfortable. You know this weighs probably 20, 30 pounds more than the mini plane does, especially with fuel in it. Uh, I, I'd rather walk with this on my back than the, uh, than the mini plane. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think it's just the way the harness is set up or where the weight, obviously it's where the weight is on your back. Oh, obviously the power. So, again, I've only flown a, a few top 80s, a few different top 80s on a mini plane frame. I flew a Nitro 200 briefly. And then I flunked this, and I'm going to tell you things you already know here. So the top 80 was the lowest amount of power, but it was lightweight. Uh, the Nitro, everyone knows, is known for lightweight, good power. Um, but uh, the Boaster 185 has more power than the Nitro, so uh, that is amazing. Especially at my weight, I weigh 149, 148 pounds. And uh, me with this motor, uh, even this 18-meter wing, the, the power is based. I can climb. I mean, faster than I need to climb, for sure. In fact, I've been climbing this whole time. Uh, I'm getting pretty high. Yeah, so level flight on this is like 5,500 RPM at my weight range. So I'm, I'm 100 kilograms <clears throat> all up. Maybe 105 if I uh, bring gear with me. Um, next, so we covered that power. Uh, the motor. So the motor, um, when I bought this motor, the Scout with the uh, Boaster on it, something I wasn't expecting was the customer service that I got. So I bought the motor, and immediately after I bought it, somebody from Team Fly Halo reached out to me and asked uh, where I got the motor. I don't even know how they do. I had obviously social media, but asked where I got the motor. I told him who I bought it from. He said, oh, yeah, we know we know him, Jason. Uh, we even know where Jason bought it from. So they do the whole history of the motor. They said, yeah, let's know if you need anything. So obviously when I crashed my motor, uh, I reached out to them, and they hooked me up with everything I needed, not just the parts I needed. Uh, Canyon at Team Fly Halo gave me his personal cell phone number and would text me anytime I had a question, even offered to take phone calls, and he did. Um, going over, you know, how to fix it, you know, give me advice on how to bend the frame where I needed it to be, what to do with carbon fiber repair, um, obviously shipping speed, everything like that. Everything I needed, they had. I even needed some odds and ends parts for my, uh, uh, for the end of my spars, little ball joints, shipped them out to me, gave me more than I needed. I even have a couple spares. Um, so that was amazing. Didn't buy that from them new. They got no revenue from me. I in fact bought nothing from Team Fly Halo except for the gear that or the items that I needed to repair the scout. Yet they were more than willing to help me. Uh, finally, today actually, uh, I was sitting at work and I got a, a direct message on Facebook from Matt Minyard. I'm sure you guys know who he is. Um, and I'd never spoken to Matt before. I only knew him from popping up in people's videos and uh, his own YouTube channel and whatnot. It's getting bumpy up here. Got me curious. Um, so yeah, I didn't know who Matt was. And uh, I'm just checking for weather. Uh, so yeah, sorry, back to it. So Matt reached out to me uh, and just out of the blue asked me, uh, do I own a Moster 185? said so, yeah and then he asked started inquiring about how I liked it I told him I love it great and uh, his reason for reaching out to me was simply to ask if 
I had any issues and what he could do to help. And like I said, I never talked to Matt. I never purchased anything from Matt. I don't even know how he or why he decides to reach out to me. But it's pretty crazy to have uh, someone like that reach out and just say, you know, if you need anything, you're not getting the support you need from your local dealerships, reach out to me and I'll help you out. So, uh, again, just fantastic customer service, which uh, I think, I mean, it's almost paramount in this this, uh, sport because it's not like you can go to the Terra Motor parts store down the street and pick up parts. You need a good support network behind you. Uh, And I really feel that I have that. Now, there are other people that have good uh, customer service. I know Aviator PPG is great. Um, I don't own a Nitro, but um, they've offered me advice on several uh, cases. Damn, dude. What the hell is going on over here? So, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I forgot to say about it. Um... So I haven't had any of the major issues that people complain about with this motor. Obviously, the number one being the exhaust. Uh, I do warm my motor up before I fly. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, I maintain the motor. I I don't adjust the car radically, which some people have uh, indicated that may be an assignable cause for for exhaust cracking. I don't know if I believe it or not. But in any case, I, I take care of it, clean it, look at it, inspect it. I haven't had to do any major major maintenance on it. I will in the next uh, hour and a half of engine time. I'll be swapping out that bushing, replacing the springs and whatnot. So, but really, other than that, uh, my experience has only been positive. And even if I do get an exhaust crack, uh, I feel good about the customer service that I'll receive from from Matt or anyone else. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, no complaints to me. Love this motor. Love my new wing. I'll cover that in another video again. I'm not going to go over it right now in too much detail, but uh, the same wing I owned before, it's a Hadron XX. It's just the 18 meter, which uh, I've wanted for a long time uh, only because I fit the weight range better on this wing. I'm 40% loaded on this wing, where I was only like. 30% or somewhere around there on the 20 meter. So, um, and I can tell you right now that it's, I mean, substantially different. I haven't even really rocked it yet, but did this thing gnarly. That was like, <laughs> I don't even know, like one inch of brake input on either side. And uh, I just rocked it like that, just barely touching it. So, yeah, man, I'm gonna go fly out this wing or check it out. And uh, I want to go that way, but there's something gnarly going on over there. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. All right, man, I'm gonna go fly this new wing and uh, leave it at that. If I think anything else about the motor, I'll get back with you.